here we go. Officially gonna be able to do my brake pads on my Tesla. It's been, it's probably my fourth attempt knowing that uh, I realized I didn't have a tool to do the job. I had to go buy another tool. Go again, next step, stop, go buy another tool. All started with the jack, this guy. Sits too high for a Tesla. So I had to build this ramp. So I had to go buy the wood to build the ramp. Did that. And every car I've ever owned came with the tools to change a tire. Tesla does not. So then I finally got it, the car up, got the jack under, and went to loosen my nuts and figured out, wait, I don't have a, I don't have a tool. So I had to go buy a tool for that. And that's right here. 21 millimeter is what you need. This is the size for a Tesla. I got this set here. Don't remember how much it was. It was fairly cheap off of Amazon. The wood I got at Lowe's. Jack, I got at Lowe's, three ton. You wanna get at least three ton. These cars are heavy. And when you're jacking it, it is. it feels heavy. You can feel it, not like other cars. It, it's pretty heavy. So then we also had to get a punch. These little guys, I think the 532 was working well for me for the Brembo brakes. I got the hammer to punch that, screwdriver to loosen it up. I had to go buy some of these to pull the pads out if you couldn't do it. And of course, Brembo brake pads. All right, so let's get to work. Roll the car back, get it up there. Show you guys what that looks like. Then I'll start loosening the lugs and we'll get some access. All right, so here we go. The car's up on this makeshift piece of junk, but I've driven on it a few times. It's sturdy, it's not cracking. It's gonna be good. We'll jack it up. Wheel chuck. Now the car is parked, so it's not going to go anywhere, but that will chuck, you know, secondary safety. I'll slide this guy in place. This is a special jack. Comes with these little stands. Uh, really nice for Tesla. Then you got to buy these little adapter pieces. This little piece is 3D printed fell out the day I pulled it out of the package. Anyway, this is the stand we're gonna jack with to also hold the car in place. Very special Tesla, you gotta have that. Yeah, this was not cheap. It's probably the most expensive part of the entire operation. All right, we'll jack it up and we'll show you what to do after that. Okay, so as I did this, um, you are brand new to this, because this is, I think, what everyone, brand new people taking it on. Uh, if you're experienced, you always skip stuff. This is a, a five piece, so it's a star pattern. Uh, any Anytime you ever torque or fasten anything, taking off or putting on, you always want to go opposite. So I hit here, and then I went here, and I went here, and I went here, and then there. And I only did like a full turn on each, maybe not even a full turn. Now, if you start here and you go, oh, I went there, I didn't go there, it doesn't doesn't really matter. You come from here, either one, really directly parts here, so that the degree, the, the thing is, is you don't just want to go do 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 do, because that's that's why you don't do it, because then it, then you could have an uneven torque. So, very simple. Most people know how to do this, but. For you guys that don't know, that's why I'm doing this. All right, so this is in, there's three holes under your Tesla. And this is just sitting right in the middle, in the middle one. And we lift from there. Okay, the stand's in place, it's holding it. I just cranked the jack up. It's uh, making contact, but it's not applying any force. It's just there as like a secondary. Cause I guess I'm just paranoid about the stands. First time to use one. 
Get this guy. Sticking it right on here, it's already loose. A lot faster to do this than use your, your torque. I think that's why we even have this little guy here. Anyway, I'll pull it off, show you the next part. All right, so tires off, jacks in place. Next thing we're gonna do is punch out these pins, just these two, and then we'll take that whole bracket out. Look at this, it's pretty dark in here, nighttime. But you wanna keep your window down, reach in, turn the wheel. So this is the five thirty seconds punch. That's what we're gonna use. Put it right there in this hole. Take the hammer, tap away at it. All I got's an iPhone, so I'm not gonna be able to videotape this. But that's what you do. Wow, that's really dirty. Once you get through, though, you can push back on this clip, and it'll kind of help you wiggle through. Once that one's gone, the spring should pop out a little bit. But you got another one right here you're gonna punch. It's only two, and it actually goes right through the brake pads themselves. So these are your pads, all right here, and that's all gonna come out. All right, let's do it. All right, here you go. You can see now the, the pins are removed. Pins go through this hole here that holds the pad in place. In this particular pad, it reinforces the spring beyond that pin. So my new pads don't have this stick piece here, which made me very hesitant on replacing. I wanted to go do some research, but nowhere could I find anyone that had these stick pieces on. So I'm gonna replace it with the other pads that's on other Model S's and all other kind of other cars. But uh, if you think this is wrong and I should go find these exact pads, Give me a comment and then tell me where to go because I can't find them anywhere. All right, let's go. We're gonna pull these out using some pliers. And yeah, once they're out, we'll replace them with the new ones. Clean everything up. Okay, so we pulled out the old pads. It's this one and the other side, this one. They actually they still have a little ways to go. And this car is at 93,000 miles. So this is pretty, pretty good. It's very rare you get a car go that far. So, uh, my worry is that they're, these are different pads, but actually I lined them up and the holes, that one's actually been behind my hand, but the holes match up perfectly. The size of the pad matches, so it's a perfect fit. So we're going to go forward. These are Brembo. Exact same as, as what was previously on there. So, yeah. Lube it up here. Just like any time you do brakes. Lube it up here and here. And just slide it right back in. So before we slide it in, I just took my tool. Wedged it in here. Pressed against the, the pistons. Oh, you can't see that at all. There's one. There's one here, another one there. Oh look, you can see the reflection, both of them right there off of the disc. And you can see exactly where they've been pushing. And you just wanna push those back in, take turns working them, and then these guys will fit in nicely. Okay, I'm gonna loop them up, throw them in, and I guess we'll do another shot of putting everything back together. Okay, so the new pads are in. Actually, I was putting them in. I was having to push the pistons a little bit just to get them to fit right in. So now I'm gonna line the holes up, pop the pins in. Before I put the pins in, I'm gonna put this guy in. And you gotta make sure you put it in correctly or else it won't work. It should go in like this. So kind of opposite, you would think the curvature of this guy would work well, just a curve. Look at that beautiful curve. But actually, it's gonna go on that way and then kind of get bent backwards and pinned down with those pins. And then these little jobbies here, they'll push into the brake. Like I tried to clean that with brake cleaner. It's still pretty dirty. 
But uh, before it was just all black, so it's, it's definitely better. But yeah, you're gonna take it, make it do a little back bend, pin it down, and you're good to go. So I'm gonna do that, show you guys afterwards, then throw the tire on and to the other side. So you always wanna do it when you're doing these brake pads, always do the front axle all together. Don't do one side and not the other side. So if you're not gonna do the rears, at the same time as the fronts, just make sure you do the fronts. Don't just do like one at a time. It's best to have it balanced where both are at the same pressure. Anyway, here we go. Okay, so there we are. It's all in. Got my two pins in. Boom, boom. Right there. Hammering them in, so those are good. Springs very symmetrical so you don't want your spring to be cocked one way or another you want it to be even uh, what i did was i checked the gap in between this part of the spring and here same on the other side if this gap is fairly symmetrical gives me a good feeling that we're good to go looking at it it doesn't look like the top's off from the bottom so check in the middle it's just another way to do it so yeah I drop it down Switch to the other side. Okay, so there we are back on this wonderful ramp I built out of scrap. Got my torque tool out. You will set that to 140. There we go, finally. So 140, you go hit it in that star pattern we talked about torque it down wait for the click click and you're good to go i'll drive off back up on the other side and do it all over again so hopefully this helps someone out um you know anyone can do this it just takes some time and you know a little bit of research um i didn't bleed the brakes uh, maybe i'll do that another time there could be some dirt in there, but uh, I just want to swap some pads out. Just tired of hearing a squeak. So, hope you guys like it. If you do, hit the like button and let's roll.